So um, this video is basically some of my all-time favourite novels, um, which I talk about in some of my favourite places around where I live. So I want to talk about <coughs> Lua de Bonaire. Freddie, come here! If Freddie leaves the fisherman alone. It's bothering. There's a very busy river, as you can see. So, Captain Corella's mandolin. Um, well, it was my brother-in-law who introduced me to Louis de Bonaire, and in particular, Captain Corella's mandolin. Um, I read it when I was about... 29 or 30. Um, my sister had just started a relationship with this guy. I really, really liked him and he was really into reading and I'd spent my 20s not really reading fiction. Um, I'd read fiction all my childhood, right up until probably my early 20s and then I seemed to think that, the, that I didn't like fiction anymore and I started to read quite a lot of non-fiction. So Captain Crow's Mandolin I guess is one of my favourite books because it rekindled my love of fiction as an adult. I just need to check the time in a minute because I've just realised I'm meeting my husband and I don't know what time it is. And if I'm late, he'll not be happy. So Captain Corella's Mandolin. Um, oh, I just loved everything about it. It's really hard when thinking about it now not to confuse it with the film. And actually, I really loved the film as well. I thought it was really well cast. I thought Nicholas, Nicholas Cage was brilliant as Captain Corelli. Um, the, the opening scene in the book is very, very funny and it kind of sets up how the book's going to go really. You've got a character who's got a pea stuck in his ear or something like a pea um, and the doctor goes to remove it and he says I don't want you to remove it um, because that way I can live in peace. So the opening scene is quite funny. I know a lot of people found Captain Crow's Mandolin a bit heavy going, particularly the Mussolini chapters. I don't know why but I didn't. I found the Mussolini chapters it's hilarious watching this, well hilarious. Now thinking about Donald Trump and um, Kim Il Young it's not so hilarious anymore because, do you know what? We haven't learned anything. We still have completely narcissistic, um, inappropriate leaders. So, but the Muslim chapters I found funny, but it, it was, um, I loved the whole book. I loved all the different kind of love stories going on. The love story of the soldier um, who, I think it was Carlos, who fell in love with Captain Corelli. Um, I loved the ending of the book much better than the film because the end of the book didn't try and um, make a Hollywood ending. And after Captain Crow's Mandolin, I then read a number of other books by Louis de which I will talk about another time. But yes, one of my all-time favourites. Not up there, Freddie. No. One of my all-time favourites, Captain Crow's Mandolin by Louis de Bonnet. My time check has revealed I am now going to run late. So I need to hurry up. Stay there, Archie. Yeah. Another all-time favourite book of mine is um, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which is um, a story really about um, Nazis and the Second World War. Um, what I really loved about this book was it's narrated by death, and death is um, very sardonic um, in this novel in terms of his, his voice. In other words, he's got a humorous but critical voice, and I realised thinking about it that actually I quite like that humorous but critical voice um, in a lot of novels that I've chosen as favourites. Certainly it has that voice in Louis de Bonaire's novels. Margaret Atwood's novels often have that voice in them as well. Um, and so does the Orphan Master's song which I'm going to talk about a bit later on. So 
The Book Thief by Marco Suzak is one of my all-time favourite books. One, because I love the way it's narrated, because it's narrated by death and I love the voice. Also, because I think it's it's um, has some wonderful characters in it. Um, has a really compelling plot, you just want to keep reading. But also, I think what it does is it shows how ordinary German people were caught up in um, Nazi Germany and how very difficult it was for them to stand up for um, people who are being persecuted. So another all-term favourite, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. But just as an aside, I then went on to read a second novel of his, which I now can't remember the name of, but I'll link it below. Um, and I have to say, it just wasn't in the same league for me. But there you go. See you later. I think it's coming, isn't it? Yeah, I want my food. Is there any vinegar in there? Oh, I can't see any, no. Chicken. Yum, yummy. Chips. Well, that looks like it. Is that chicken? Yep. What is that mural? Love is it? Of, is it of Bedford? book mm, probably 15 years ago now possibly less but it has stayed with me um, ever since again I think there's partly because I think Eva's voice in the novel um, is very critical um, um, and um, and also it's an examination of childhood and what makes somebody, a 16 year old boy, walk into his school and um, shoot and kill his school friends. Um, so the novel is basically a series of letters that Eva, the mother, writes to um, Franklin, her estranged husband. And it's really an examination of what she think, why why Kevin turned out the way that he did. Um, you know from the from the outset of the novel what Kevin has done. You know that it's a high school massacre, um, and you know that Kevin survived it and is serving a sentence in a juvenile prison. Although he may actually be in an adult prison by now, um, and that Kevin had planned it so that he would be treated like a juvenile and not like an adult, in order that he could be released. Um, so the story opens, you know all that straight away, and then it's a series of letters, as I say, where Eva is trying to work out whether, whether the way they brought Kevin up led to the way that Kevin behaved, or whether there was something about Kevin that was different from, um, from the outset. In other words, is he a mass murderer because they did something wrong as parents? Or is he a mass murderer because he was born evil? And that's kind of really what the novel looks at. Um, and I just found it fascinating, because I found it fascinating looking at it from the parents' perspective. Another novel um, I really love is The Hinton Mysteries, A Fine Balance. Um, and I read that again probably, I don't know, 10 years ago now. Um, I found the novel hard going to begin with, getting into it, because it's it, obviously it's based in India and it's a completely different cultural experience to mine. Um, so I found it a little bit slow to begin with, but I would recommend you stick with it because the characters are absolutely incredibly drawn. Um, the relationships between the characters, the fully rounded 
backstories that you get from each character, and there's some awfully tragic, um, difficult moments in the novel. But ultimately, I think it's a novel about friendship and about um, how important having connections with other people is, and how important it is not to lose trust in other people. So two very different novels there, one about um, trying to understand what would lead someone to commit mass murder, and another novel about how um, the human spirit can survive. Um, and I guess in some ways, you know, talk about Kevin has some similarities to that, because it, Eva has somehow survived what her son did. Um, she's certainly damaged by it, she certainly isn't the same person she was, um, but she survived it. And same with the characters in A Fine Balance. Despite the terrible things that happen, they, they demonstrate the strength of the human spirit and how we can come through things. And the reason that I filmed this in the car is because I know I said I was going to film some of my favourite novels and all my favourite places, but actually sometimes just driving with no access to the internet, with no one bothering me because I'm on my own, and just listening to the radio is one of my favourite places to be. I quite I quite enjoy it. I'm off to pick up my son today from university. Um, he's just finished four years there. He's got a degree in the Masters and he's actually coming to live back at home for a little while <coughs> while he sorts out his next move. So big change for us today because I haven't lived with him for four years. Um, and we've moved house since then. So we haven't actually lived in this house altogether. So it'll be interesting. But I'm really looking forward to having him home as well. He's a really good person to have conversations and discussions with. time favourite in my final favourite place which is actually back at home in my office. I'm just in the process of um, sorting out all my shelves and you can probably see that there's kind of new boxes on there that weren't there before because I've just finished studying and I'm now starting work so I'm really enjoying sorting my office out because I sometimes work from home as well. So right now this is one of my favourite places. But the final book I want to talk about, and I've lost it now, is The Orphan Master's Son by Adam Johnson. I just need to find it. I put it on my shelf somewhere. Hang on. Aha. It's here. I've just realised I've been looking at the viewfinder, not the camera. So, Orphan Master's Son. Love this book. It's absurd, um, funny, tragic, um, weird, um, great sardonic humour again. It's about a man called Pak Ju Jun Do, Do um, who grows up in an orphanage but for some reason thinks he's special because he gets more beatings than anybody else. Um, the story starts quite slow and it almost starts like historical fiction which I don't particularly like but then suddenly it becomes an adventure spy novel and then it turns into a love story and, and it's all set in North Korea and though some of the stories in it seem incredibly silly and, uh, and absurd Actually, when you read about North Korea, you realise that this is, a lot of this is truth. For example, um, North Korea have kidnapped um, movie stars from America in the past and then made them work in the North Korean industry. They've also kidnapped scientists and various other people. So, yes, my final recommend in my final favourite place is The Orphan Master Sun by Adam Johnson. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slightly vloggy um, book roundup um thing whatever it is <laughs> <laughs>